Good morning. Uh, we are going to talk about the source of our words today. So where do our words come from? The things that we say. Have you ever uh, said something at the wrong time? Like it was fine to maybe say at another time, but you just said it at the wrong time. Have you ever said something that you wish you had not have said? That if, if you could ever go back and take some words back, you would go and take those back. You wish you hadn't have said those words. Well, you know, the Bible teaches us that there is a source from which our words come from. We're going to take a look at a couple uh, passages in Scripture. First, we're going to be in Jeremiah chapter 17. And we're going to look at verse 9. It says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Uh, let's go ahead and look at verse 10 there. It says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. You know, God tells us that he looks at the heart as a source of how he will uh, uh, give to every man according to his doings. So the, the Bible teaches us that we reap the things that we sow. And God looks upon the heart to see what blessings that he may give. The things that we are doing, uh, he, uh, he rewards us according to those things by looking at our hearts, right? Because just because we might be doing something nice or good for someone doesn't mean that we truly feel it within our hearts to do that. We may be doing that um, uh, falsely. We may be putting on a facade or a fake mask and might be doing something nice or saying something nice when we actually don't even feel it. So God looks upon the heart. Um, and th there actually is a verse that says that. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. Uh, but here in Jeremiah 17, uh, verses 9 and 10, it tells us that our hearts are deceitful, so we should know that because our hearts are, are made of flesh and we are made of flesh, that we have a deceitful heart, a heart that will tell us one thing. Why is that? And it's because that we are very selfish in nature. We are very self-centered, always looking to benefit our lives and our feelings and uh, to feed into our pleasures uh, personally. And so because of this, because this is our nature to do, uh, our hearts are deceitful. So, have you ever had um, people maybe in a conflict that you're having with people throughout life, have you ever had them say the same thing to you over and over again in conflict? Like, like you're not listening. Maybe some, you know, maybe multiple people that, you know, are in your life, your loved ones are saying the same thing over and over again. You are not listening. We have to pay attention to things that are being repeatedly said to us, especially when they're being said by multiple people. Right? Maybe people are saying, you are so arrogant. You are so rude when you're speaking. You're so hateful when you're speaking. And they're continually saying this. Well, there is some weight into people uh, identifying the same thing with us over and over again. And so in conflict, we often think it's the other person that is at fault, right? But likely, if people are saying the exact same thing over and over again, and multiple people, that is within us. And our hearts are truly deceitful they will our heart will deceive us all right and the thinking that it's everyone else's fault thinking that we're right all the time but the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it i the lord search the heart i try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings you know, there's a fruit that is produced in our lives, right? And we are living the things that we are speaking. There's another verse in Proverbs that says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. 
and he that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So if you're constantly speaking condemnation and you're being critical, uh, you're being hateful, uh, you're saying your life is lousy, well, guess what? It, it is. You're living a, a life that is producing a fruit that you don't maybe like but you don't realize that you're speaking this out. It is sourced where? In your heart. Because our words are sourced in our hearts. Let's, which brings us to our next verse in Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, we're going to look at just the second half of this verse. This is actually Christ speaking in this passage. But he tells us a powerful truth here in uh, Matthew 12, 34, in the last half there. It says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That means that our words are sourced from the heart. So the source of your words are coming from your heart. Now, the Bible teaches us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. It says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is a continual renewing, like when you're thirsty to go and drink some water. Then you quench the thirst, right? So it's, it, we have to be intentional about this being transformed in the renewing of our minds, meaning that we need to go to truth of God's word to find our source of the things that we need. Now, you know, in conflict, we say things often that we shouldn't. We say, and sometimes it's not the words that we're saying. It's how we're saying them, right? But the Bible teaches us that a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So there's literally ways that we can respond to turn away anger. Now, you may not turn it all away, but you may turn away a good portion of it by speaking in a soft way and not just speaking in a soft way having a soft answer those words that are softer that may uh, not be as harsh towards someone in response and the Holy Spirit remember we've studied this will teach you all things so this is being transformed by the renewing of our minds. So no matter what somebody has said to you, you can reply in a good way. You can turn away wrath. You need to know that your own heart is deceitful and maybe what has been said to you might be true and it might be hard to hear. Or maybe it's not. Maybe something that has been done to you, it's, it's, uh, it's injustice. But God will give you the words to speak. He won't only give you words. He will give you peace in that conflict. See, the source of all of our words is coming from our own hearts. Have you ever... When was the last time that you were really upset about something? I think you, you, you noticed some emotions that came out that, you know... Maybe we're concerning, even. But the last time that you were upset about something, were you crying? Were you screaming? Were you just bitter? You were a bitterness of heart. You just, oh, you just felt so tough on the inside, so harsh. Um, and those, the the last time that you felt that, what exactly were you feeling? You know, maybe somebody was saying something to you or doing something to you or had done something to you. And what were you feeling? Were you feeling unloved or unheard or rejected or manipulated? And so when you think about how you felt, what you were actually feeling the last time that you got emotional over something, whatever that is, is likely sourced from your childhood or something from many years ago.
You know, whenever um, children have um, a lot of abandonment in their childhood from parents, and when they go on to get into relationships later in life, they have this extreme fear of being abandoned again or left alone again. Maybe you're feeling when you um, were emotional the last time was, was feeling very alone, very isolated and unloved or not cared for. And see, these things are sourced often from our childhood when these emotions still can be coming out today. And see, God has already brought healing to us, y'all, through the blood of Christ. Because Christ wasn't just crucified for our transgressions, but also our infirmities too, which is our mental and physical weaknesses. So he has brought everything that we need to get healing he's already done for us at the cross the work has already been performed so the so it's sort of like the magic is already there the prescription is already there right have you ever had a headache and you've got Tylenol set in your cabinet and you, and you just won't go and take it uh, because you just you know self uh, self-destruct you know you don't mind just feeling the pain and because that's maybe what you're used to. Maybe from your childhood or something that happened in your past. That here you will have everything that you need right there to help you. But you won't use it. You won't take it. You won't take the help. You won't accept it. You will stay in misery. You will choose to stay in misery instead. That's the thing, same thing that happens with us when Christ is already there. He's our, his spirit is there within us at all times that we can reject his spirit from bringing us healing and so the the last time that all these emotions came out of you is, is likely sourced from something many many years ago and you need to ask the Lord say Lord can you show me what that was when the first time that I experienced that when was the first time that I felt uh, alone or abandoned or rejected or unloved or whatever it is that you felt and ask the spirit to show you where this came from where it's sourced from and then say Lord you've already brought me healing and I I turn to you for my healing show me what I need to see so see God will always show you truth because there's there's life in truth so he will show you that you're loved he will show you that you're not rejected he will show you that you're not alone he will show you that you are special and important he will show you that um, that you're not what other people say or not how other people have made you feel you are not that and the Holy Spirit will help you to heal you see, often when we are having issue in life and we are speaking out things in our life that are not good, they're not healthy, they're not, they're not benefiting, they're actually harming because all of our words either bring life or they bring death. Death to joy, right? Not, maybe not physical death, but death to joy, death to something, death to peace right the things that we're saying the narratives that we're saying look the source of our words is coming from our heart and our heart is deceitful we often think it's it's everybody else's problem and not ours and God says look I want to show you I want to bring healing to you I want to help you to understand something I want to help you get past this so that you're not continually dealing with the same thing over and over in life that you're you're constantly feeling alone or constantly feeling unloved or whatever it is. God wants to show you the source and he wants to say, look, I have brought you life and peace and blessing and joy in which you can have at all times, no matter what is going on, no matter what conflict you're in with someone. 
right? Because life is a series of relationships and we are constantly uh, in those relationships having potential to have conflict and sometimes we do. And God wants to help us through those things. Remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, and the heart is deceitful. But the Spirit of God is, brings life and truth and peace when we tune into that and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let the Lord bring truth to your mind when you're dealing in any situation of life that is challenging. At all times, let Him bring truth to you. But especially at those times that you're dealing with issues with people in conflict. God is the source of all comfort, is He not? He's the source of all truth, is He not? And so when we are lashing out at people or continually having the same problem over and over again with people, it would, it would do us well to, to, to see the truth of why we are dealing with the same thing and to allow the healing anoint, anointed oil to just run through our minds in the spirit of the living God to give us that that renewal of our minds to give, it, give us that transformation that God wants to bring where you no longer are experiencing that rejection or experiencing that aloneness or experience being unloved or experience uh, feeling not being heard. God hears you and God will bring you truth that you need. Remember, a soft answer turneth away wrath, and the source of your worries is coming from your heart, and your heart is deceived. Now, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. These are truths of the word. Let the Lord show you. No matter where you are, you may be somebody who doesn't deal with, uh, with, with conflict because you because you just are reclusive and um, you just kind of stay to yourself and don't actually say anything well something is building inside of you if you're not able to speak right God wants to give you the, the words of wisdom he wants to give you that soft answer there's a season there's a time for everything right sometimes God will tell us not to say anything at all and sometimes he will Lead us to share something. Know this. That God will never. Um, bring you. Words that are. Um, trying to destroy. Because God only brings life. That doesn't mean that his words don't cut. Right? Because we know that. That the Bible teaches us that. It's like a sword. The word is like a two-edged sword piercing the heart, right? But sometimes words need to be fitly spoken, as scripture says. And it's like grace seasoned with salt. A word spoken in due season. So sometimes, even though something is truthful and needing to be shared, it is not the right time. And we need to yield to the Spirit and to know the, the, the season and the hour and so that it can be grace seasoned with salt when we say things. <laughs> Look, remember that you may be the only God the world ever sees. If God is inside of you, they may never touch a Bible. They may never go to church. They may never listen to a preaching or teaching sermon on TV. They may never hear it. They may never go to it. You may be the only Bible they ever read. So it is so important in our lives and communications and relationships with people. And we know the source of our words. And this helps us to move forward in allowing God 
to give us the right words spoken in the right season. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed today's teaching. God bless you all. Lord willing, we'll be back in the morning together uh, sharing a new teaching uh, in the Word with the Amazing Grace Women's Retreat. We have coffee shop Bible studies in Salisbury, Indiana every first Thursday of the month and every third Friday. And then we have an annual meeting at Kingdom Life Church in Salisbury. So I hope you all uh, would consider joining. That's a women's uh, meeting uh, meetings and love to have you. I will also be off next week. I'm taking uh, spring break, so I'll be off uh, next week. So we won't be sharing the Bible studies, but I want to encourage you that next week, uh, if you're tuning in and wanting to, to listen or you sub subscribe to our page and you're getting our teachings dropped in there, that maybe uh, you just go to the page and look back through the history and, and find a teaching that you have not heard yet and use that as an opportunity to um, to listen to some of those. There is um, a series that we did recently on the return of Christ. Uh, maybe you take that opportunity to go listen to some of those teachings about the return of Christ. I believe that was an eight-part uh, series. It was, it was kind of long. I'm trying to remember exactly how many parts that was, but uh, maybe take a, some time to go listen to those or, or just go way back and hear some of the earlier teachings. Well, God bless you all. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Remember to subscribe to our page if you want to be getting those teachings um, dropped in so you know when those are, are loaded up each, uh, each day. God bless you all.